Welcome back to another stupid villain video and I'm afraid it's a low hanging fruit contender but let's not allow a sense of fairness to get in the way of a good character assassination. It's Syndrome from The Incredibles. It's a movie about an incredible family of fantastic fawn knockoffs. Violet here would be a carbon copy of the invisible woman if she wasn't a socially anxious emo. The human torture's personality has been given to a young flash guy and his powers to a flaming baby. But at least they were clever enough to give the freakish flexibility to the seductive female character and the tank simpleton of the bunch isn't a hideous abomination this time. This is a family movie after all. So this nuclear soup family end up beefing with our main subject Syndrome. First impressions he doesn't exactly come off as intimidating. Looking like he found a rejected Riddler costume in a Gotham dumpster. This is a horrible suit darling, you can't be seen in this. Pulling off a look somewhere in between a troll doll and a sentient burning matchstick. Wait, is this meant to be the human torch? The law requires that I answer no. Apparently though he's supposed to be based on writer director Brad Bird. That's what we call a self burn. This guy is a super villain lunatic who fancies himself a hero. His name itself shows a glaring lack of self awareness by way of it being a bit of a Freudian slip. Obviously referring to the numerous mental disorders he seems to be afflicted with. Most notably hero syndrome. A real life villain condition where an incident is maliciously created by the supposed hero so they can then swoop in and get the glory. Do some damage. Thrones of screaming people and just when all hope is lost, Syndrome will save the day. Yeah, in this case, you just know that isn't going to pan out. Syndrome did get an early victory though, starting off as a side character before being promoted to the role of main antagonist. But as far as winning is concerned, that's about as good as it gets for Syndrome. Point 1. Syndrome dedicates his entire life to an unjustified self-destructive grudge. So before this guy became the ginger winger, he was a blonde haired soup fanboy obsessed with becoming Mr. Incredible's sidekick, so called Incrediboy. Though he probably dyed his hair in his youth to look more like Mr. Incredible, I prefer to think of his later ginger locks as a physical manifestation of his victim mindset. Coincidence? I think not! Doomed immediately by his given name, Buddy Pine. The most wimpy, sidekicky name I think I've ever heard. This guy would have had a shorter expiration date than Robin. So naturally, Mr. Incredible, being the responsible oaf that he is, rejects Buddy's advances. But this guy is a resourceful little shit. Messing things up royally during an altercation with Bon Voyage, Mr. Incredible winds up saving his life, leading to a sequence of events which causes superheroes to be banned entirely. Nice job, Incredibitch. So so unlike normal people who would grow up and realize their previous aspirations were foolish and acknowledge that Mr. Incredible's actions probably saved their life, Buddy, burdened by an impressive intellect, various mental ailments and possibly lacking a father figure instead goes all in on a path of revenge, dedicating himself to creating the illusion that he's a hero, killing and disempowering all superheroes and getting back at Mr. Incredible. So he starts by using his talents to build a business empire, showing his moral and ambiguity after massive success in the weapons sector. And after 15 years of toil, he still thinks his original plan is a good idea. Dude had the will and means to trade his money for more power, fame and influence, but all he wants to do is play superhero and satiate his ego through self-destructive means. Hell, you could pretend you're a cowboy, jump on your dick rocket and blast your load into space for all I care. Whatever gets you off and away from us. <laughs> But instead, Buddy is more committed to his harebrained scheme than ever. Consumed by his childhood grievances and motivated by petty personal concerns, he de-evolves into a psychotic megalomaniac with some seriously sadistic tendencies. Seems a bit unstable. He does occasionally revert to bouts of adoration, but only to legitimize his childhood beliefs and as a way of claiming supremacy above even the most powerful superheroes. You, sir, truly are Mr. Incredible. You you know, I was right to idolize you. I, I, I always knew you were tough, but tricking the probe by hiding under the bones of another super? I'll be a bigger hero than you ever were. This guy makes Ducat seem positively lucid. Dr. Cox would be so proud. On a quest for power and recognition, yet he seems to have missed that a zero point technology should provide a source of near limitless energy. Lame, 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 lame! He could have been one of the most legendary humans in history, but instead had rather labor 
in relative obscurity, preparing to initiate a plan that will destroy his business empire and probably kill him. Point 2. Syndrome's short-term plan is reckless and riddled with oversight. So 15 years after being slighted by Mr. Incredible, Buddy starts his plan in earnest, taking on the moniker of Syndrome, killing superheroes en masse and developing his scheme to be worshipped as a hero. Extending a convenient offer of employment, he lures soups one at a time to his island volcano base, which it goes without saying is a total villain cliché. Luckily for Syndrome, Mr. Incredible and the other soups are dullards who have been blinded by their search for relevance, falling for his obvious ruse after having their egos appealed to. Any normal person would be thinking they're about to lose a kidney or be inducted into a pyramid scheme. Syndrome has been pitting these soup suckers against his vicious killer robot, governed by a dangerously adaptive AI, slowly improving its killer instincts, intelligence and weaponry with each new generation. Yeah, this thing is like a Skynet in waiting, it could be the most reckless part of this entire scheme. We enter the fray with Mr. Incredible, who was sold on the idea of taking on a Gen 7 robot, seemingly missing that he ended up taking on Model 8. Another mistake from Syndrome, but I suppose with the distinct lack of soup brain power around here, there's no need to get too finicky. Well, I'm sure I don't know, darling. Luck favors the prepared. Luckily, it's not an advanced enough model to stop Mr. Incredible sassing it hard, though version 9 does prove to be too much for him. So now comes time for Syndrome to announce himself to Mr. Incredible. I'd say it would be better to keep himself distant and anonymous, but of course that would defeat the purpose of this entire deal. Indulging in another villain cliche, he starts monologuing and almost gets a tree trunk in the face for his troubles. You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I can't believe it! But the problem here isn't so much his exposition spewing, it's the fact he had Mr. Incredible restrained a few seconds ago and he literally has the power to create a captive audience, but he didn't think to use his zero point beams before getting stuck into his speech. Useless. Come, 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 come. Too much of it, darling. Too much. After assisting in Mr. Incredible's escape, we discover that Syndrome's dumbass drone also needs a bit of development work, mistaking a long dead gazer beam for Mr. Incredible's corpse. And as usual, that's not the only failure in surveillance and security going on around here. At different times, both Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl manage to infiltrate Syndrome's command center without much effort. They're penetrating the bureaucracy! Mr. Incredible going further, gaining access to Syndrome's mainframe thanks to a posthumous heads up from Gazer Beam. But I'd bet Gazer Beam only had to guess this password. With no numbers, symbols or other words, it's a weak password in any universe. And it wouldn't be hard to figure out once you understand just a little about Syndrome's psychology and his massive god complex. Kronos being the Greek titan who believing a prophecy he would be overthrown by one of his offspring devoured many of his super powered kids in an attempt to avoid this outcome. If only Syndrome had read more into this cautionary tale, he'd discover that Kronos created so much resentment he brought about the very thing he'd sought to avoid. One of many things Syndrome seems to have missed. After catching up with Mr. Incredible, Syndrome continues to keep this dangerous threat alive for the sake of a sustained gloating campaign, sparking up a Hulk-like level of rage after making Bob believe his family is dead. So naturally, now's the time to get all close and personal and turn your back on him. It'll be easy, like breaking a toothpick. <laughs> Show me. Betraying his most loyal subordinate who ends up assisting the Incredibles from here on out. Not that it was really necessary. Eventually Syndrome restrains the entire Incredible family using this setup without investigating the powers of the two children. Violet's presence probably wasn't necessary though as Elastigirl can stretch any and all of her <clears throat> regions. She should already have the means to mess with this control panel. A fact Syndrome and Bob should be well aware of. Wink wink. Oh, this is just too good. Somehow Syndrome survives long enough to kick off his laughable little hero charade, pitting himself against his deadly robot that supposedly only he could defeat, which is a flawed idea to begin with since any remaining superheroes could just team up and take this thing out fairly easily. But the real concern is, he didn't program this final Omnidroid to be incapable of harming him or to play out a predetermined series of maneuvers. No, it's genuinely trying to attack and kill him. And this sluggish remote is literally the only thing stopping it from following through. 
Such a foolhardy proposal suggests a lack of proper training. Syndrome is betting his life on his very human reflexes and the functionality of his technology. So the Omnidroid, simply following its adaptive programming, recognises very quickly that this control gauntlet is the source of its enslavement. And predictably, without the Omnidroid's handicap, things are over very quickly. It's safe to say Syndrome has massively overestimated his abilities. Well, let's hope we don't cover it! So it's an embarrassingly public loss to his own robot and a gargantuan hit to his ego. Without recognition or fanfare, he spends his big moment face down in a puddle of his own spit, leaving the Incredibles and Frozone to take the win. I'm good. I'm good. But aside from a bit of short-term glory, what exactly was the grand purpose of this whole deal? Well, unsurprisingly, it's as juvenile as the rest of it. Point 3. Syndrome's long-term aspirations would destroy his legacy and possibly the world. Syndrome's short-term goals are mostly about satisfying his need for attention and acknowledgement, but there is a long-term component to his plan which seems purely driven by jealousy and revenge. I'll give them the most spectacular heroics anyone's ever seen! And when I'm old and I've had my fun, I'll sell my inventions so that everyone can be superheroes. And when everyone's super... <laughs> No one will be. That's right, Syndrome intends to let his entire life be governed by the pathetic maxim, if I can't have it, nobody can. So with such irrational motivations, it's not surprising that this plan is absolutely riddled with flaws. First off, the premise itself is a bit shonky, with superheroes already outlawed and vigilante activities punishable by law. It's essentially already an environment where nobody is super. This whole thing is kind of pointless. And in what world does Syndrome believe if he could run his hero con with impunity. He'd have the law coming down on him like any other hero. Not to mention the intense scrutiny he's likely to receive once he announces himself to the world. It's likely the authorities would uncover his nefarious activities and his former occupation as a weapons developer. Aside from that, it would become obvious fairly quickly that Syndrome's abilities are based on technology as opposed to innate powers he possesses. Technology breaks down, malfunctions and can be disabled. You don't only have to knock off a few of his gauntlets to render him nearly powerless. Even the damn robot could recognize this, let alone the world's authorities and heroes. Watching for any discernible patterns in their procedures, looking for any weakness in their defenses. With his powers able to be neutralized more easily than natural soups, it's only a matter of time until people develop countermeasures making Syndrome's technology ineffective. Without a superhero's extrasensory perception, reflexes, or physical endurance, how long did he really think he could carry on the charade without being taken out? A sniper's bullet could do the job. Even though his technology probably won't be all that by the time his soup career is over, gifting his dangerous weaponry to the riffraff of the world is still a terrible idea. In reality, all it would probably do is spark an arms race that would put the world at risk. No one will be super, because everyone will be dead. But thankfully, none of these scenarios eventuate after Syndrome's bumbling joke of a debut. With his assets frozen, defeated and desperate, Syndrome shows just how far he is willing to take his grudge with Mr. Incredible. Oh, don't worry, I'll be a good mentor. Supportive, encouraging, everything you weren't. He commits to decades worth of child rearing just to get a final jab at him. Was that meant to be a punishment for them? And again, he didn't take out the Incredibles when he has the chance. I'm not sure why he thought they'd be taking that line down. Proving once and for all that he never had what it takes to be a superhero. After he's defeated by a novice soup baby and finished off by his fondness for capes. <laughs> If he'd been paying attention at all, he would have already known these things can lead to catastrophe. 